Sleep Book by Dr. Zeus. And if you'd like to buy the book, check in the link description down below. The news just came in from the country of Kirkham that a very small bug by the name Van Fleck is yawning so wide you can look down his neck. This may not seem very important, I know, but it is, so I'm bothering telling you so. A yawn is quite catching, you see, like a cough. It just takes one yawn to start other yawns off. Now, the news has come in that some friends of Van Fleck are yawning so wide you can look down their necks. At this moment right now, mm. under seven moon noses, great yawns are in blossom. They're blooming like roses. The yawn of that one little mm. bug is still spreading. According to the latest reports, it is still heading across a wide field through the sleepy night air across the whole country towards every which where. Mm. And people are gradually starting to say, I feel rather drowsy. I've had quite a day. Creatures are starting to think about rest. Two Biffabaum birds are now building their nest. They do it each night and quite often I wonder how they do this big job without making a blunder. But that is their problem, not yours and not mine. The point is, they're going to bed and that's fine. Sleep thoughts are spreading throughout the whole land. The time for night brushing of teeth is at hand. Up at Herkheimer Falls, where the great river rushes and crashes down crags in great gurgling gushes, the Herkheimer sisters are using their brushes. Those falls are just grand for the tooth brushing beneath. If you happen to be up that way with your teeth, The news just came in from the castle of Krupp that the lights are out and the drawbridge is up. And the old drawbridge drawer just said with a yawn, My drawbridge is drawn and I'm going to stay drawn till the milkman delivers a mark about dawn. I'm going to bed now so nobody better come round with a special delivery letter. The numbers of sleepers is steadily growing. Bed is where more and more people are going. In Culpeper Springs, in the Stilt Walkers Hall, the Stilt Walkers stilts are all stacked on the wall. The Stilt Walker walkers have called it a day. They're all tuckered out and they're snoozing away. This is very big news. It's important to know. And that's why I'm bothering telling you so. Way out in the west, in the town of Merced, the Hinklehorn Honking Club just went to bed. Every horn has been quietly hung on the hook for the night in its own private Hinklehorn nook. All this long happy day they've been honking about and the Hinklehorn honkers have honked themselves out. But they'll wake up quite fresh in the morning and then they'll start right in the Hinklehorn honking again. Everywhere creatures are falling asleep. The collapsible frink just collapsed in a heap. And by adding the frink to the others before, I am able to give you the who's asleep score. Right now, 40,404 creatures are happily deeply in slumber. I think you'll agree, that's a whopping fine number. Counting up sleepers, just how do we do it? Really quite simple, there's nothing much to it. We find out how many we learn the amount by an audio tele o tally -o count. On a mountain halfway between Reno and Rome, we have a machine in a plexiglass dome which listens and looks into everyone's homes. 
And whenever it sees a new sleeper go flop, it jiggles and lets a new big love ball drop. Our traps count these balls as they plop into a cup, and that's how we know who is down and who is up. Do you talk in your sleep? It's a wonderful sport. And I have some news of the sports to report. The world's champion sleep talkers, Joe and Mo, Red Soft, have just gone to sleep and they're talking their heads off. For 55 years now, each chattering brother has babbled and gabbled all night to the other. They've talked about laws and they've talked about gores. They've talked about paws and they've talked about floors. They've talked quite a lot about Santa Claus. And the reason I'm telling you this is because you should take up the sport. It's just fine for the jaws. Do you walk in your sleep? I've just had a report of some interesting news of this popular sport. Near Finnegan Fen, where the sleepwalking group, which not only walks, but it walks in La Hoop. Every night they go miles. Why they walk such a length? They have to keep eating to keep up their strength. So every so often, one puts down his hoop, stops hooping, and does some quick snooping for soup. That's why they are known as the Hoop Soup Snoop Group. Sleepwalking, too, are the curious crandles who sleepwalk on hills with assorted sized candles. The crandles walk nightly in the slumbering peace. In spite of sight burns from the hot dripping grease, the crandles wear candles because they walk far, and if they wake up, want to see where they are. Now the news has arrived from the Valley of Vale that a Chippendale mup has just bitten its tail, which he does every night before shutting his eyes. Such nipping sounds silly, but really, it's wise. He has no alarm clock, so this way, he makes sure that he'll wake up at the right time of day. His tail's so long he won't feel any pain, till the nip makes the trip and gets up to his brain. In exactly eight hours, the Chippendale Mup will at last feel the bite and yell, Ouch! and wake up. A Mr. and Mrs. J. Carmichael Crox have just gone to bed near the town of Fort Knox, and they, by the way, have the finest of clocks. I am not all sure that I quite understand just how this thing works with that one extra hand. But I do know this clock does very slick trick. It does tick tock how it goes, it tock tick. So with ticks in its tocker and tocks in its ticker, it saves lots of time and the sleepers sleep quicker. What a fine night for sleeping, from all that I hear. It's the best night for sleeping in many a year. They've even asleep in the Zwieberbeck Motel, and people don't usually sleep there so well. The beds are like rocks, and as everyone knows, the sheets are too short. They won't cover your toes. So, if people are actually sleeping in there, it's a great night for sleeping. It must be the air. It's a great night for snores. I just had a report of some boys who are tops in the musical sport. The snortiest snorers in all our fair land are the Snorer McPhail and his Snorer Snore Band. This band can snore Dixie and Old Swanee River so loud it would make 40 elephants shiver. The loudest of all boys is McPhail. He snores with his head in three gallons of pail. So they snore in a cave 20 miles out of town. If they snored closer in, they would snore the town down. Do you know who's asleep out of Funa Lagoon? Too very nice Funa Lagoon baboon. 
We've added them into a Who's Asleep count, which has grown to a really amazing amount. Exactly 8,808,000 creatures are sleeping now. Isn't that great? A Jed is in a bed, and the bed of a Jed is the softest of beds in the world, it is said. He makes it from pom-poms, he grows on his head, and he's sleeping right now, on the softest of fluff, completely exhausted from growing the stuff. The news has come from the district of Doft that too oft are asleep and they're sleeping aloft. And how were they able to sleep off the ground? I'll tell you. I weighed one last week and I found that an oft is so light he weighs minus one pound. A moose is asleep. He's dreaming of moose drinks. A goose is asleep. He is dreaming of goose drinks. That's well and good when a moose dreams of moose juice, and there's nothing goes wrong when a goose dreams of goose juice. But it isn't too good when a moose and a goose start dreaming they're drinking the other one's juice. Moose juice, not goose juice, is juice for a moose, and goose juice, not moose juice, is juice for a goose. So when a goose gets a mouthful of juices of moose and moose gets a mouthful of juices of goose, they always fall out of their bed screaming screams. So, I'm warning you now, never drink in your dreams. Speaking of dreaming, I think you should note that a bumble type club is now dreaming afloat. Every night they go dreaming down Bubble Tum Creek, except for one night every third or fourth week when they stop for repairs because the bumble tub leak. But tonight they're afloat, full of dreams, full of bliss. And that's why I'm bothering telling you this. Mm. At the fork of a road in the valley of Avode, five foot weary salesmen have laid down their load. All day they've raced around in the heat at top speeds, unsuccessfully trying to sell Zizazuf seeds, which nobody wants because nobody needs. Tomorrow will come, they'll go back to their chore. They'll start on the road, Zizazufing once more, but tonight they've forgotten their feet are so sore. And that's what the wonderful night time is for. Everywhere, creatures have shut off their voices. They've all gone to bed in the beds of their choices. They're sleeping in bushes, they're sleeping in crannies. Some on their stomachs and some on their fannies. They're peacefully sleeping in comfortable holes. Some even on soft, tough barbershop poles. The number of sleepers is now past the millions. The number of sleepers is now in the billions. They're sleeping on steps and on strings and on floors, in mailboxes, ships, and in keyholes of doors. Every worm on a fish hook is safe for the night. Every fish in the sea is too sleepy to bite. Every whale in the ocean has turned off his spout. Every light between here and far Foodle is out. And now, adding the things up, we are way beyond billions. Our Who Sleeper score is now up to the zillions. 99 zillion, 9 trillion and 2 creatures are sleeping. So, how about you? When you put out your light, then the number will be 99 zillion, 9 trillion and 3. Oh. Good night.